keeping the lights on. So this is what our linemen are actually using day in and day out. And building for our future. Okay, now we've got it, it's long. This week on the Senate Report. It's something we do every day. We wake up and we turn the lights on. We go to the office, the lights are on. We plug in our phones at night and they charge. We kind of take it for granted. What we don't think about very often is all the work it takes to get our energy where it needs to be. We have a group of about eight transmission linemen um, that would use these gloves. State Senator Bill Beagle visited the Grid Control Center at Dayton Power and Light this week. That's where the company makes sure every one of its customers get the power they need. In addition to touring the facility, Senator Beagle also participated in some safety equipment testing. People don't think of utilities as an exciting uh, and, and changing uh, business, but it, but it is. And there's a lot going on uh, with natural gas and, uh, and it's a heavily regulated industry. So there's a lot going on with it. We've talked a lot over the last couple of weeks about the state's capital budget, a nearly $2.5 billion bill that will fund infrastructure projects all across our state. Well, as I like to say, there's no doubt in my mind, the Lord smiles today. Governor Kasich signed the Capitol Bill this week in Columbus at the old Reeve Avenue Elementary School. This school is going to be transformed into a community center with money from the capital budget. Senate President Keith Faber, Senators Kevin Bacon and Scott Olslager attended that event. The school is in Senator Bacon's district, and Senator Olslager, as chair of the Senate Finance Committee, helped shepherd that bill through the process. We try to take a look and see how does it touch individual lives? How does it wrap up in the, in the dreams? High schools and universities get a big chunk in this particular capital budget where the individual Ohioan can go to those schools to try to reach his or her dream, whatever it might be. We had to fight really hard to get the money for the Reeb School, but I tell you what, it's, it is an amazing project. Um, this is a true example of public and private partnerships. Here we have a facility that's going to house multiple charitable organizations. We're going to have a boys and girls club. Um, an athletic complex, um, health care, job training, and an early child development center all here um, in one location. If you talk about why we're doing new school buildings around this state, it's about quality of life and growing and preparing people for the jobs and growing our economy. Why do we invest in higher education? The same reason. President Faber talked with us in a bit more detail about the capital budget this week in our caucus conversation. Here's a preview. But the part that everybody talks about are the things we're doing locally in the communities, those community projects inside the capital budget. Those are the things where we help local governments do their quality of life things. It is the local parks, it's the Little League, it is the maintenance that we're able to help them do on fairgrounds. It's all of those things. And we made a priority this year to, to do those projects again. Finally this week, a great story out of Wellington, where the community came together in a big way for its schools. McCormick Middle School was rated the worst school building in the state by the Ohio School Facilities Commission. But the plans for a new building didn't include an auditorium, so the community formed a group to raise money for a new one. State Senator Gail Manning was on hand as the community celebrated the groundbreaking this week for that new middle school and a new auditorium. These people had the worst school in the state of Ohio. Ohio School Facilities Commission said that. And now they've managed to pass a levy where they're going to be paying uh, about 65% of the bill. Ohio School Facilities Commission's picking up the other part but they didn't stop there. They went and they went out to businesses and, and family members asking for more money so that they could uh, put in a two and a half million dollar auditorium. I think that is fabulous that this small village was willing to do that. Well, that's all for this week. As always, you can keep up to date with us every day on our social media pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. The address is at Ohio Senate GOP or visit our website, ohiosenate.gov Republicans. Thanks for watching.